Hello everybody, I'm Dave Eagle, I run the Stargazing Planetarium and I'd like to welcome you to my next YouTube video which is all about hydrogen alpha solar imaging and I'm going to introduce you to my setup. A lot of people have asked me how do I achieve the results that I get? So I thought I'd put this together to show you exactly what I do. So here's my setup, there's the telescope with the hydrogen alpha setup on the back. And here it is. So you look at the uh, bottom telescope. So this is my main hydrogen alpha setup. You see the main telescope here and you can see the filter and everything that I use to view or image the sun down this end. The little EDAT telescope at the top there that was actually set up with a um, Herschel wedge there so we could view the transit of mercury in white light as well as hydrogen alpha at the same time. But ignore that one for now because this is my main solar setup. And you can see that it's a large refractor or fairly large refractor. And it's actually a Skywatcher 120 Evo Star refractor. It's not the most expensive refractor you can get. It's actually fairly cheap um, because it does suffer from chromatic aberration. So it produces colored fringes around the edges. The different color wavelengths of light, they're not all focused at the same point. So it just produces color fringes if you use it at night time and on bright objects. Of course, if you're using a single wavelength or just looking at a single wave band or wavelengths like we are with hydrogen alpha, that doesn't matter because it's only got one color coming in. So it doesn't matter in this particular setup. So hit down on the other end of the uh, telescope, we've got disassembly. So here it is all put together ready to go in the end of the refractor. And just a note to point here when you're using a setup like this because all the heat and light is coming into the telescope there is no filter on the end of the telescope. All the heat and light is actually coming into the telescope. So you don't want to use anything other than a refractor for that. So don't use a reflector or a schmidt cassegrain telescope because you're letting the light in and it's a recipe for disaster. You get too much heat, too much light, and you could damage the telescope and you could damage your eyesight as well. And that's really important. You don't do that. You have to be really careful with any solar work. So make sure that you are as careful as you can. And this is my complete quark assembly. So there you go, that's all ready to go onto the telescope. But I'm going to break that down for you so you can see exactly how it all fits together. So here it is. So up here, we've got, first of all, a Barda UV IR cutoff filter. Now that should stop most of the UV and IR that could cause damage to go into the filter. Because I'm only using up to a 120 millimeter refractor, this is sufficient energy reduction for this setup. If you're using a bigger refractor, then you would need a proper energy reduction filter and they are really expensive. But for up to about 120 millimeter refractor, that is sufficient to reduce most of the UVIR coming into the system. Okay, in front of the, uh, behind the filter, you've got the star diagonal. It's just a standard star diagonal as a prism or a mirror in side one of those which just puts the light at right angles. You could actually do without that and just have a straight through tube to give you the focus that you need. Okay and then plugging into that is the Daystar Quark and I've got the Chromosphere version. There's two versions but I'll talk about that in a little while. I've got the Daystar Quark and that is a very sophisticated bit of kit. It's electronic. So here it is and how that quark works is inside there the heart of the system is called the etalon and it's made up of a number or a stack or sandwich of glass plates glued together and they are so close together they're less than 0 0.05 inches um, apart and what that acts that acts as an interfer interference filter and it only lets certain wavelengths of light relative to uh, hydrogen alpha through the system and that's 656 nanometers and that comes through the filter and uh, everything else is filtered out so that you only get this hydrogen alpha down the red end of the spectrum into the eyepiece end of the quark. 
Now these are very expensive to manufacture because a lot of them I feel probably don't come up to scratch. And in fact, every single etalon is completely different. They, the specs on these are so tight that every single um, etalon passes a different wavelength. And so that has to be taken into account in the manufacturer. Now they probably throw a lot of these away. So I guess that's why they are so expensive. So let's have a look at how the quark works. Now here you can see the uh, configuration of the quark. We've got a blocking filter right at the front that takes out all the heat and light coming into the system. So it's safe to view and safe to image. And then behind that, you've got some lenses. And this is in effect a Barlow lens, a telecentric Barlow lens. And that brings all the rays of light coming in parallel so they can pass through the etalon and the interference causes the wavelength of light to come through. And then the image plane is there where you put your eyepiece or your camera. And of course it does require those parallel beams of light. And that is why these lenses are built in. And that's actually a four times two Barlow lens. So that actually has an effect on the telescope that you're actually using it on. Of course, any Barlow on the system will actually increase the uh, focal length of a telescope by whatever the Barlow is. So this is a four times two Barlow. So it increases the focal length of the telescope by four times, 4.2 times. And of course, that will result in increased magnification, a reduced field of view, so you don't see as much of the sun as you should. And of course, it also makes the image darker as well. So these are some of the problems that are creeping in when you're doing some of this solar work. The other little problem that I have with the uh, quark, um, but uh, as long as you set up really early, ready to go, so you've got a little bit of time to do it, it takes about 20 minutes for it to warm up. Once it's plugged in and you have to wait for the light to go from yellow to green, that can take up to about 20 minutes to warm up. Because what you're doing when you plug it in, you're heating the quark to a certain temperature so that when the etalon reaches a certain temperature, it will pass the wavelength of light that you want. And of course, every quark is totally different because their etalons are different. And so every quark will have a different setting. So you'll have to test those settings to make sure that you get the best tuning out of your quark. And of course, if each setting takes 20 minutes to come up to the right temperature, then it can take a long time to go through all those settings. But it's worth it once you get there. There are other Daystar products. Um, there's the Solar Scout, which is a dedicated solar instrument. But the beauty of the Quark on its own is the fact that you can actually put it on shorter focal length telescopes to get more of the sun in. And there's also this Daystar Quark Gemini, which is really nice. It's combined, it's got the two built in. It's got the chromosphere filter, etalon, and it's also got a prominence etalon built in. And once you get those tuning of those two right, you can actually use this little arm to flick between the two different views. I'm not sure what those two views are, but uh, that'd be really nice to uh, try. And of course, it's got a really nice smiley face on it as well. So it's got to be worth having a go, hasn't it? And of course, there are other hydrogen alpha products available. The PST is a really good beginner's scope. Um, and of course the Lunt uh, products are really good as well. That's what I started out with a few years ago when I started my solar journey. So there you go. So we've got the Daystar Quark there. I've got the Chromosphere version. There is a prominence version which does pass a slightly different wavelength. Um, so there are two different views you can get. And then of course, what you'll do, will may find, it depends on your setup and your camera, you may find that when you actually go to take some images, you might find these light and dark circular bands going across your image. These are called Newton's rings. And to get around that, what you do, you tilt your camera slightly to the off position, to the uh, incoming light, and that actually gets rid of those interference patterns. And then of course, nothing comes to nothing. If you're using it on a quark, this tilt adapter, uh, then you need a quark adapter to actually screw in between the adapter and the quark once you've taken the eyepiece or screwed the eyepiece um, holder out of the quark. And then I found that uh, the space in between those two, you can actually fit a 0.5 focal reducer in there as well. So it actually gives me a little bit of a wider field of view by putting that in between. 
it does reduce the quality of the image slightly because it's only a cheap uh, focal reducer but it does give me a wider field of view and I've not complained about the images so far. And then of course on the back of the tilt adapter you use a mono camera. There's no use using the colour camera because the Bayer matrix in there will filter out the blue and the green light and so it's much less sensitive than a mono camera. Of course you're only looking at one wavelength. We're looking at this hydrogen alpha red wavelength of light so a mono camera is sufficient and it's much more sensitive than a colour camera to take in solar images at these wavelengths. I've been using the DMK41 camera up until now and then just recently I've managed to get myself a ZWO ASI 174mm mono camera which is much more sensitive and a much bigger chip so it does give me the wider field of view without having to use the focal reducer so the couple of images I've taken using that so far have been really really nice and it's also really good for uh, lunar work as well so that's my setup that's the, everything that I need to uh, take the solar images that I do and then once you've set that up what do you see well on the left hand side is the photosphere or the light sphere of the sun and that's what you view in white light of course we're at solar minimum at the moment so that's actually not very exciting you might be able to see a few sunspots there have been a couple on there recently but really really small much much smaller than this one and then you might be able to see on the limb especially towards the limb where the uh, disc is a bit darker you might be able to see some faculae as well but of course on the right hand side is the chromosphere or the color sphere of the sun and that's what we view in hydrogen alpha and you can see the prominences you can see the sunspots if they're present and you can see lots and lots of other structures as well so it's really really nice to see and if you look at that you can see that the chromosphere is actually bigger than this photosphere and it's about 30,000 miles above the surface of the uh, photosphere so you're looking at a different layer of the sun when you're looking in hydrogen alpha light so that's something to take into account. So when you was, uh, was observing like something like the Mercury transit, we could actually see Mercury appear on the limb of the sun in hydrogen alpha before we could see it in white light because you're looking at the sun and it looks a bit bigger in the field of view. So here it is. Here's my system all set up, ready to go. So there's the Evo star refractor and there's the stack of quark, tilt adapter and the camera all ready to go there it is all there ready to take my images and uh, that's it for this uh, particular video and i will talk about how i take and process my solar images in other videos so i hope this has been helpful and that you get on your solar journey and start to take some images so keep safe keep well and most of all keep looking up